Hello friends, I Professor Gaurav Morgare from the Oriental Institute of Science and Technology. Today I am going to discuss about the signals and system. In this lecture of the signal and system, we will be going to discuss about what is signal and what is the systems and we will further discuss about the basic signals like unit step, unit impulse, ramp signal, parabolic and other signals. So, what do you mean by signal? A signal is a physical quantity which varies with respect to some variable and that variable most of the time is the time. So, signal is defined as the time variable quantity which conveys the information or it is also defined as the function of time. Signal is a function of one or more or more independent variable which possess some information. Examples are the voice signal, video signal, signals on the telephone wires, etc. And make sure noise is also a signal but there is no information. So if any signal which is having the no information then we will consider it is as a noise. Now what is the system? If you will see this block diagram a system can be defined as a combination of devices which can operate on the signals and produce some corresponding responses. Input of the system is also called as the excitation and output is called as the response. For one or more input, a system can have one or more outputs. So now further we will be going to discuss about the basic signals. First is the unit step function. In the figure you are seeing a unit step function which is having the value from 0 to t if you are seeing the value of this ut signal will denote the unit step by the unit signal ut and it exists for the positive value of time that means from 0 to t t tends to infinite it is having the magnitude of value as 1. It is the best test signal and the area under these unit step function is the unity. Next is the important signal unit impulse function. This unit impulse function is denoted by the delta T and it is having or it exists only at a single value of T is equal to 0. So at T time is equal to 0 it is having the amplitude of 1 and this area is tending it going towards the infinity uh, at other values of time it is having the value of 0 if we will integrate this impulse function that means the integration of the impulse function will give us a resultant of a unit step function which we have seen in the previous slide so if we will differentiate the unit step function we will get the unit impulse function. Next signal is the ramp signal. Ramp signal is a linear signal. It is having a slope. So if in the figure you will see it's, it, it is denoted by the RT signal. It is having the value of t for t greater than or equal to 0. That means as we increase the value of time the amplitude is also the increases. The x-axis is showing the time axis whereas the amplitude axis or the y axis is denoted by the RT. So at T is equal to 1, it is having the same magnitude of 1. For T is equal to 2, it is having the same amplitude at T is equal to 2. So the integration, if we will integrate this unit step function is the previous we will get the signal of RT. So if we we'll differentiate the RT we will get the unit step function and if we we'll double differentiate the RT we will get the impulse function. Next signal is the parabolic signal. Parabolic signal is again further classified as it is denoted by the xt or pt we can denote it. Its function is t square by 2. This is the equation of the parabola and it also exists for the t greater than or equal to 0. 
for the negative values of time all the signals are having the value of 0 now if we'll again integrate the RT signal ramp signal we will get the parabola in the equation we will see RT is denoted by the function t so we'll if we'll integrate the t we will get the t squared by 2 which is a function of a parabolic signal will go backward side that means if we'll differentiate this if we'll differentiate this we will going to get the RT if we'll differentiate the RT we will get the UT if we'll differentiate the UT we will get the impulse function so this is the combination we can see the next signal is the signal function signal function if you see signal function is having for t greater than t value that means t having the value greater than 0 that means for the positive side it is having the value of 1 and for t lesser than equal to 0 sorry lesser than 0 it is having the value of minus 1 so at t is equal to 0 it is not clearly defined what is actually the value is having but yes we can show it is having a t is equal to 0 it is having a value of 0 because from 1 to minus 1 the value is dropping down suddenly the equation of the signal t can be given as 2 times of ut minus 1 so if we will calculate the Fourier transform of it we will use this condition our next signal is the exponential signal exponential signal is generally denoted by e to the power alpha t and alpha is the shape of the exponential depending upon the value of alpha we can divide it into three cases first case is if alpha is equal to 0 that means e to the power 0 we will get the value of 1 so 1 is a constant function no problem about this for the second case if alpha is lesser than 0 that means alpha is minus e e to the power alpha t so it will be going to give us a decaying exponential and for the third case if alpha is greater than 0 that means for the positive values it will give us a, give us a rising exponential so these are the basic signal which normally we used for the signals or understanding of the signal there are few more signal like the rectangular function if you'll seeing the rectangular function it is clearly denoted that it is having it is uh, the general formula for the rectangular function is xt a rectangular function of r by t so minus t by 2 to t by 2 is the width of this we can say the width of the pulse is t here so from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 or minus 3 to plus 3 if we'll mention r by 6 as the example similarly the triangular signal triangular signal is also denoted by the a 1 minus mod of r by t where r is the function and t is the width next signal is the sinusoidal signal this is the common basic signal if it is having the value of a as the amplitude omega naught is the frequency and phi is the phase value it is an oscillating signal with the maximum amplitude of plus a to minus a and its time period can be calculated by the formula 2 pi by omega naught sync function so sync function is also an important function any function of sine t by t or sine pi by t if you will see this formula sine pi t by pi t it will give us a function sync so its value that means this center portion is having the 90 percent of the energy existing in there and it is decaying so if we can say at value of minus infinite the value is tends to be 0 for this similarly this will be a decaying value at t is equal to plus infinite this will slope will very will have the amplitude of 0 at infinite or minus infinite the pulse width is calculated by this formula this can be also called as the sampling function and it is denoted by the sin t by t so thank you for attending this session in the continuation of this signals and system lecture topic in the next lecture we will discuss about the classification of signals thank you